Hey Rangers, today I'm going to be doing something a little different. Every single Sunday, hopefully if I can do it, um, I'm going to be reviewing Lupin Ranger versus Pata Ranger. Now, I'm really sorry if I get the names of the characters wrong. I know that there'll be a lot of people either having a go at me. So I wanted to say this out first and obviously I'm going to try and get all the names right. Um, but obviously there will probably be two reviews during the kind of week. Um, obviously I don't see the sub, so I'm going to be watching the raw version. Then I'm going to be watching the sub version. So I hope I can update and do like a kind of another review and I kind of talk about it. So this is literally of what I'm seeing is what I am reviewing. So yeah, I think it'd be kind of cool. I really am looking forward to it. I, the first episode was great. I actually really enjoyed it. The characters on the Lupin Rangers, who by the way, spoiler, I'm actually a really big fan of. I just love the suit designs. They really stand out. So we have Kyrie, then we have we have Kyrie Toma, I think is T-O-O-M-A. And then Umika. I think I said that right. Um, they are the Lupin Rangers, which I will probably refer to as Lupin Red, Yellow, and Blue, because it's a lot easier because again, I don't want to butcher the names. And then on the Pata Rangers, we have Chiriko, Sayuki, and uh, Tosika. I think again, I'm probably to butcher the names, but as we review the Sentai, things will hopefully get a lot better, and I'll just be able to roll the names off the tongue and then we can begin. So yeah. Let's begin the review. So we open up on this kind of club scene um, where people are betting and we've got this one guy who is just rolling a dice on a roulette wheel. But what I thought was the owner, but is actually the monster, he decides that he doesn't want this guy winning. So he uses his power to get double zero on the green, which then makes the guy lose. And he's just down on his luck. He's like, ah, because this guy has lost all his money, he is escorted out of the building or what looks like he's escorted out of the building. At this point, the Lupin Rangers just bash through the window. I was like, holy crap, this is cool. Lupin Red just throws his card and it hits the guy who makes him transform back into a monster. We get a bit of a firefight. The Lupin Rangers are using their blasters and I really like the slowdown effect. It felt really kind of embracement and I really liked this. It was just very slow-mo. It went really well with the actual scene that it was being shot. And also, I really love the choice of music that they've done in this. It doesn't feel like it's out of place. It doesn't feel like it's all kind of happy music. It, feel, it felt like some of the music was from Bayonetta. And I just generally dug the music for this. And if they bring out a soundtrack, I would generally love to buy it and just listen to all the music. It is amazing. Now with their devices, which is I'm guessing is the, their Zords that miniaturefied, the Red Ranger kind of dodges and then places his Zord and his morphing ability onto the monster, which then opens his safe. Because I'm guessing all the monsters in this are all got safes. So the Zord actually opens up the safe so they can get the actual prize that they're after. Lupin Red takes out the cube that is actually inside the monster. That is the main treasure for this episode. And then much later on, we get a lighter. The monster starts attacking everybody. And then we see the Pata Rangers. They're actually heading towards the building where the fight is actually happening. As the monsters keep attacking the Lupin Rangers, we see the smoke kind of of settle and boom we actually have them morphed ready to fight and I've got to admit I think they're just cool the suits are possibly my second favorite suits and the first ones were obviously the Gokaijas. They continue to fight. They are beating the minions. Again, until I actually see the sub version, I, mean, I don't know what the minions are called. So the Pattern Rangers just bust in and they're like, boom, you know, freeze, you know, this is the police. And then Lupin Red just goes, nah, 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 and loads his Zord up, fires it, it starts expanding and then flies out the window and they all jump up, uh, ready to actually catch it and they fly away. Um, and I really liked Pattern Red because for me, it feels like he really hates Lupin Red and he's like, Goo! it's kind of like every single time I see it, it's just like, Lupin House. Um, so yes, I'm really hoping that this hatred kind of carries on for the entire series until near the end when they actually all become friends. It looks like it's the next day and everybody is talking about the Lupin Rangers. There is articles, there's stuff online, there are all the news stations and this is really cool. This is when we see uh, Pata Ranger Red, he is in his like detective gears. I was like, oh, I thought they were with like a police station, but it looks like he's a detective. I think they wanted to bring out this detective part until he goes back or this is his look uh, and he's so angry that he's scrunching up the ball and this is when we see um lupin red and he is going like ah, 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 don't litter padded red's like Gaw! and actually misses the bin but then picks it up puts it in the bin 
and Lupin Red is like, hmm, okay, picks up his groceries and is then greeted by a mysterious man who has a limo. I generally thought this was like a butler type character, but from the way that the episode has come out, he was actually more of like the person that gives the tasks. So he's like a mob boss, and I kind of really thought that was awesome. We now switch to a restaurant. This is when Lupin Yellow, as well as Lupin Blue are actually there. Lupin Yellow is a waitress, where Lupin Blue is the uh, chef for the actual restaurant. We now come up to the Patalanger base. This is when Pink and Green are kind of interacting with each other. Um, they've also got this weird robot, which I generally don't like. I kind of think that if you didn't have this character, it would make this show even better. But I generally didn't like the robot. Um, I found it very creepy. And it, I, I thought if you can have a robot, have it a little bit like a normal human type robot rather than these like big arms. He does like release his arms later on. But I was like, oh no, I know you've got to have the cute thing. But why'd you have to have this robot? No. We also meet the chief of police and he looks really, really cool. I think he's also gonna be the guy that keeps Pato Red to actually be normal and not be overbearing, like grrr. And also the way that he was around um, Pato Red, it was very kind of weird. It was more like he was scared, but I think that the chief is gonna be the one to actually kind of calm them all down at times. As Pato Red actually enters the room, the robot shows Lupin Rangers and he just goes grrr. And I generally think I would love it if he kept doing this every single episode. Every single time he hears Lupin Red, it's like, ooh, I just think it'd be really cool. I generally am liking this entire lot. We come back to the car, and this is when Lupin Red is talking to the kind of boss, the mob boss, whoever he is at the moment. Again, waiting for the subs to know so I can know who he is. They start talking about, I'm guessing, the past element of what the Lupin Rangers were, are like a master thief. And as they put the cube inside this book, it says it's the Lupin collection. So I'm guessing the entire whole main theme is them collecting these elements or these relics and putting them inside the book so they'll always be there for safekeeping. But they show that these like kind of monsters find out where this original ranger put all the treasures and then they just kind of steal it. So obviously this is a big thing that we'll find out much later on in the series. We then meet the actual main bad guys of the series. Um, again, I don't know what their names are. We'll find out much later on. But I really like the design of the main monster. He really looks like a mob boss and I was just... I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. And it's the way that they've kind of captured that element of mob bosses from media, where it's like, I am the most powerful member of this family, you know, and even when we were introduced to one of the female monsters, he's like, you know, show your respect, you know, kiss the hand, you know, sh just kneel to show your respect to this entire family, to this organization. And I really did like that touch because it did feel like this was a, like, a mob crime gang. The mob boss gives Lupin Red his next assignment, a photo of who the next monster is, who the next bad guy and target is, as well as what that monster has. And as I said before, it's a lighter. As he drops the Red Ranger off, he then gives some more information. And then this is when the Red Ranger goes in and says, everything's closed, get out the restaurant. And I thought, oh, okay, that's kind of weird. But you could have waited until they've all finished and say, get the hell out. Lupin Red gives all the information to the other rangers and says, this is our next target. And then they decide to close the restaurant, as I said, and go and get changed into this amazing costume. They find out where the target is. They sneak in and I really like this. It just felt a really nice element. As they're going through the building, uh, the blue ranger stops everybody and goes, actually, we can't go any further. There's laser traps here. And he picks up some dust and throws it. And then they see the lasers, they kind of like dodge through it and they kind of do acrobatics through it. And then they find their target. The rangers now are in a vent and they're looking at their target. The yellow rangers like hee hee hee, you know, laughing at the fact that they're sneaky until a small little spider comes along and she freaks out. But the blue ranger puts his hand over her mouth, say stop screaming, they'll know that we're here. But it's too late. The monster and the minions have found out where they are. They turn around and the minions fire at the air duct, which then causes the rangers to fall down. And we get a really nice ton of fighting. We then switch to the Pada Rangers inside their base. The Pada Rangers now have been alerted to the Lupin Rangers, or at least a monster attack in the city. And it's all downtown at the docks. So as the rangers are about to leave, the chief of police comes in, gives them a suitcase, and inside it are their morphers. And they're like, oh! 
which look kind of cool, but they're given the same morphers as Lupin Rangers. There is more fighting with the Lupin Rangers and the minions, and the Red Ranger decides to do a kind of magic trick where he throws loads of cards up in the air, and the monster decides to kind of take them all down, um, which causes like a little mini explosion. The monster then attacks all the Rangers, knocking their hats as well as their masks by the Red Ranger. He grabs both the yellow and blue Lupin Ranger, holds them together, and this is when the Red Ranger is like, yeah, I can take the shot. But then all of a sudden the monster grows two hands or reveals two hands and actually attacks the Red Ranger. Actually keeps the other two with them so that they can't escape. And this is when the Red Ranger, I'm guessing, shows the monologue, talks a little bit again, waiting for the sub. He decides he takes off his mask, he throws down his hat, and he attacks the roof to make the actual roof fall down so that the Lupin Rangers can escape. You kind of think, oh no, they've all rubble. Um, but then all of a sudden there's a bit more of a bang and blue and yellow jump up and then we see a flashback of when the rubble's coming down crushing the monster that blue and yellow shoot the area, actually fall down into the lower parts and then get back straight up. We now get a proper morph and oh my god, this is cool. I have got to admit this is one of the best morphing sequences that I have seen for a long time. I really enjoyed it. I kind of, I love the fact that it kind of reminded me a little bit about Goat Kaija, but I also really like the fact that they're against the wall. You know, it's a kind of like how you would see robbers do it back in the time of the era of when this sort of genre was filmed. Um, I really love the wanted poster, but I kind of think that they could have expanded on that. I would have loved to see the Rangers just walk up, rip down their kind of wanted posters and oh, I think it would just be really cool. Now, I have to admit, I was genuinely really impressed with this. We have the fighting and rather than just the static camera shots that we've seen previously with other Sentais as well that we see in normal media like Power Rangers, Oh my God, the camera angles were phenomenal. We had static shots as we would do normally, but then we got kind of like flips over, like they'd just taken GoPros and you saw different elements, different fighting styles as the camera would roll over. It would come from different angles. The monster would be hit against the wall. You would see that. The monster then would roll over. Oh my God, the camera angles were just absolutely perfect in this and I absolutely really loved them. Lupin Red walks up to the, uh, to the monster and he actually looks like he's gonna take the lighter from him by actually opening his safe but this is when the Pata Rangers arrive and they literally hold up their guns and the Lupin Rangers are like whoa hang on a minute where did you get that or like the huh how could you have that Pata Rangers morph straight into their suit and I generally thought we would have got kind of an intro scene because it's only three Rangers and even though the episode was coming near to the end I would have loved to have seen them morph and actually fight um, but we actually just end the fact is that they've morphed, they're raring to go, and oh my god, this seems really cool. You don't get something like this until it's like a team-up episode or another Sentai comes into the Sentai, but I was generally really impressed with this. Now, this Sentai has made me want to watch the next one. I really want to be invested in this. I really think this is going to be a really good Sentai. Um, I love the camera angles. I love that the fact that this was done slightly differently. The fact is that there's one shot where it's just one guy going all around and they're fighting and it just seems seamless. There's no kind of shake. There's nothing. I genuinely really like this. And I think that the introduction to the Lupin Rangers was actually really well done. And I really like Pata Red, where he's like, go. I think that's going to be an element that I think is going to be really funny to me that it's going to happen to every single one. It's like, Robot House! Oh, this Sentai is worth watching. If you're about to get invested, I highly recommend watching it. Um, as I said, the camera angles, the scene, the characters, they all seem really interesting. And I really love the Lupin Rangers. They are my favorite Rangers so far. Normally I'd be like, oh, I like the police guys. In the next episode preview, we see that there's a fusion between the Pada Rangers. So that's gonna be really interesting. Even when you heard their voice, you heard the three different voices talking. So I'm gonna be kind of interested to see if that's just the main focus. But yes, I love the weapons, I love the props, I love the fact that they're in the warehouse. I generally just really enjoyed the Sentai and I highly recommend that you watch it. And I really can't wait for the subs. I can't wait for that. So Rangers, your question of the day is, what do you think about the Sentai? Have you seen it? What are your thoughts? Are you excited about it? Let me know down below in the comments. And if you've liked this video, like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the other videos on the channel. And if you want to help out the channel on Patreon, link is in the description down below. And as always, Rangers, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a bit.